Hey guys, the objectives of this video are to discuss and interpret the stress and strain diagrams for steel. So I'll jump ahead to what the stress and strain diagram looks like. So it would look something like this. We have the stress uh, represented on the y-axis and the strain on the x-axis. And we have um, this shape here. So this is a what we would call a test shape. So basically what we would do to get a shape like this is we have a steel specimen that would look something like this and we'd have it fixed in a machine at the top and the bottom that would be uh, pulling apart the specimen at a certain rate um, and at a certain force. So with that, so if we would know the force at the top and the bottom, so we'd be able to work out the stress because we would know the cross-sectional area of the shape that we're testing and we would also fix on some kind of measuring device here which would very accurately measure the change in length. Um, here and with the initial length and the change in length we'd be able to work out the strain. So if we uh, plot those two values together, so for every stress value we get a strain value um, and if we plot that together we get a shape like this. Uh, the first important thing to, thing to note about this shape is uh, this first zone here which we'll call the elastic zone and basically we have a, um, a linear um, relationship between stress and strain um, in between this zone here um, and that, of course, the gradient of this line, stress over strain, is just equal to E. So it's equal to our Young's modulus or our elastic modulus. Uh, another important thing to note about this zone is um, it's this is the uh, being the elastic zone. What that effectively means is if we were to, if we load a specimen with a certain with a stress.